Quick update on BTC. And so the setup for 10,252 balked at our key level of significance of 10,000 and failed to run it. And in fact, has since timed out. Um, in the process of timing out, it set up a falling wedge that it broke to the upside with a pop. What is possibly, there's two scenarios here. There's a bullish, um, although the overall events is communicating as a feedback that it's not as bullish as it's uh, as it could be or should have been. It should have made targets. It should have made it on time. So that in itself is feedback. HVF um, is a feedback mechanism as well as a setup uh, that it's ran into proper headwind and um, probably here at the round number, which would have been new headlines um, for BTC. This break is adequate out of the wedge, but not super uh, continuation. This candle, not a bad candle, so there's possibly a bit more height to come. But the overall more probable outcome is that we will have a rollover uh, and run these funnel levels. The alternative, which is a minority uh, scenario, is a wind-up setup, so we'll get... Uh, a little higher we'll need to get a little higher for a qualifying RH2 and then a pulled back that's going to require us at least to get north of the 61.8 here now I've drawn this from the highest point to its lowest point just to show you that so far you've only really rallied 38.2% um, of everything you gave back in the falling wedge. The falling wedge did show though that there was um, retreating buyers though and that they hadn't disappeared entirely although there were moments of capitulation there and there and a little bit here. Um, but the buyers were broadly still there or there around ready to nibble. Um, this push up, as I say, it's looking adequate at the moment, um, but it's not overly exciting. It's not overly impressive. Um, it's at the 38.2% FIB. You'd want to see it at the 61.8 to, to start feeling confident again. This said, Ethereum had not so long ago a setup that failed to make target set up another wind up where this would be impulse one and impulse two and then this the secondary uh, wind up pattern ended up not only smashing its own targets the target of the previous pattern but then overperformed immensely so that can happen sometimes you can run into a headwind for a while um, and then it then it just ceases uh, and then you wind up again and you actually clear a major hurdle and then you run for a while that is fairly reasonable potential scenario for BTC as well, which would be great for the bullish uh, environment. But overall, generally, um, timing out and not having a target is a negative feedback uh, position. So it's quite important what Bitcoin does from here. If it stalls prior to the 50%, doesn't make the 61.8% doesn't at least clear and run it a small bit um, I would say you've got a bias for the bear side um, it is looking a little perky now so that's not altogether bad news um, but we'll see if that's sustained I mean this is a two hourly uh, candle it could turn around and uh, be forced down so that was the you know I suppose the, the Bitcoin um, catch up we in fact were very lucky in that we played uh, Bitcoin cash not Bitcoin but we did expect or assume on balance of probabilities that Bitcoin would make target too um, within its time frame. So that never happened. Um, fortunately, the trade we took was, in fact, Bitcoin Cash, which uh, very fortunate to have some um, take profits at 18.45 and some here um, at the takeout of the HVF level here. Bitcoin Cash um, ran its target, had a moderate little head and shoulder there that will have made target as well to the down, a slightly spiky one, left shoulder head. Right shoulder, I would go for the neckline there. You can draw that target in actually because all key levels and targets are of interest. Draw it in um, down to your neckline and your most obvious point, um, and that would be roughly there. And you can see that it's clearly made that as a slight pullback, bring brought you back to this same key level of significance. And you can see that was run. So nice confluence of levels as well there. And that squeeze also was all uh, occurring right here. And it was all at 
the 1500 uh, mark you see that 1497 there's your 1500 um, anyway since then strong rally out so it's shown good reasonable re a relative strength but it does still sell off with Bitcoin and it's uh, looking okay here on the on the one hourly um, but in but in fact it depends what happens from here Bitcoin cash could be dragged down with Bitcoin but it has to be said it may target and it hasn't pulled all the way back to the funnel like but uh, BTC so actually still showing some relative strength but it's no longer in any form of setup so it's the least interesting well it's 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 not as interesting as it was just before when it was in the uh, HVF setup that it had we may have uh, Bitcoin cash against Bitcoin here and you can see that it has similar structural DNA um, ran its 18s target and in fact went to 1850s um, at its most uh, highest point over here and this is a moderated pullback so it's a it's a bit it, for now it's a it's a, a better relative strength hold against bitcoin this looks like a pennant here so that could push a little higher as well best thing r h1 l1 h2 l2 wind up and we go some more um and that's it for bitcoin and uh bitcoin cash um we have other things we're looking at in our premium group um, now um, but this is just a, a, a retrospective for uh, free view um, we've got a couple of interesting uh, setups that are on our super macro that are i suspect we're getting opportunity to stockpile right now um, for the next major move could just be a little bit dull for cryptos let's just have a look at our coin puffs um and make sure we're up to date so bitcoin up 2.45 ethereum 5 that's quite a strong performance from ethereum and then to uh 66 for ripple and cash up even more relatively so that illustrates the relative strength also keep an eye on ethereum um has been showing relative strength against bitcoin and was also in a setup Let's just see if we've got ethereum there so this was the example actually um, of Ethereum um, timing out uh, and then winding up on an ascending setup and then blowing them both. And then it formed at the same time as Bitcoin Cash. We chose the Bitcoin Cash option, but at the same time it set up structure over here for an, uh, a breakout and move and also made that targets. So been a relative overperformer to Bitcoin as well, Ethereum. And these are all um, what I'd call big uh, liquidity coins. So we haven't dropped into anything that's, you know, tough to get back out of um, afterwards. Again, look how the target forms, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline, perfect HVF method neckline. And you can then go draw your target and you can see that's probably also been uh, safely made um, to the downside and then it's rallied and that's what happens after a target that's why targets are targets they're good places to get out so there we go boom and uh, that's that's clearly made and now you now you're in this rally i don't like the structure as much though um, it's kind of a bounce it needs to push up properly and give you something up top here and after that nasty bottom there's a scope for this to fizzle off which is why i think um, BTC might have a strong uh, a, a, a difficult time as well I just get a feeling that the cryptos need a breath uh, and there could be some selling so I'm, I'm on the cautionary side um, so that's a run through Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin three of the top five um, I hope you enjoy it and speak to you all soon by the way don't forget the webinar on the 17th that's right, the 17th of May um, on shorting, no less. A free webinar um, with an offer at the end for those who are interested in joining our community. Um, go to the website, themarketsniper.com, and first do a questionnaire. This is not for most people. You have to have means. You have to be prepared to accept the risk of speculation, etc., etc., etc. Okay, speak to you all soon. I hope you enjoyed the clip.